everybody, Andy here. As you probably guessed from the title of this video, today's video is going to be a bit more serious than any video I think I've posted in the past. It's about a topic that is obviously very close to me as a member of the LGBTQ plus community and it's something that I think is a very big issue and needs to be talked about openly so that people can really understand where we as the queer community are coming from with this issue because I think that a lot of what we try to say about queer representation in movies and TV shows and books gets a little bit lost in what straight people think that that means. Now I posted this as a blog just yesterday but I am reiterating everything I said in that blog in a video so that it is a bit more accessible. The reason that I'm reiterating essentially everything that I said in my blog is that I don't want to go off on tangents because this is a big issue and I only focused on a small part of the issue and there are a lot of other things I could say but I don't want to lose the message that I think that I've captured in that blog by going off on a million tangents and losing my train of thought and therefore confusing the purpose of what I'm saying. You know, I focus on a very niche argument because there are sides to it that I don't think I have the right voice for, i.e. trans representation. It's not something that I as a cisgendered woman can talk about, so I don't talk about that. But there are other parts of it that I feel like I can talk about, so I do. And so I'm just going to reiterate everything I said in my blog. It's almost going to be verbatim, so if you've read the blog, don't feel like you have to watch this. But, you know, I feel like the two will kind of complement each other. You'll get my intonation that you won't get in reading it. Before we start, I want to say two things. First of all, this is going to be partially a review of the movie Rocket Man. I loved Rocket Man. I love Elton John, so I was really excited about this movie. And I was also really excited when a lot of the media coming out about it was that they were going to do a better job than a particular other movie that shall remain nameless for now with their queer representation. And I was excited about that, so I was excited about this movie. I loved this movie. I don't want that to get lost in anything I'm saying. I loved it. I loved Taron Egerton. Am I saying his last name right? I don't know. I loved him. I think he was brilliant. I also think Richard Madden was brilliant, and I think Jamie Bell was brilliant, and I just think the whole movie was brilliant. And I don't want that to get lost because I am going to be criticizing a lot of parts of this movie. Second thing is I'm going to take some unashamed shots at Bohemian Rhapsody and I'm not going to apologize for that fact because that movie was insulting and I don't need to say anything more about it than that for now. Let's get started. As I said, this is going to partially be a review of Rocketman because I watched Rocketman on my birthday. As I'm filming this, that was yesterday. So everything is still really fresh in my head, which is why I'm doing this now. I kind of want to get it all out while I still remember what I was thinking and feeling while watching the movie. And like I said, I loved it. I thought it was so good. I cried pretty much the entire way through. If you give me a movie about a queer person and they're facing issues relating to their queerness, I'm going to cry. I'm just, I'm just going to cry because I feel that in my heart in a very personal way. And so... I'm gonna cry and I just cried the whole way through this movie. So many tissues. I also have a massive soft spot for Taron Egerton at the moment because the things that he's been saying in interviews about his desire to create a movie that the queer community can take ownership of and his understanding and consideration for us and the way that we are going to feel watching a movie about a queer person, about a queer person's life and career and you know, he was just really understanding about the fact that that was going to impact us. We were going to feel about it in a very particular way that straight people are not going to feel about the movie because they haven't had those experiences. And the fact that he understood that and has talked about that openly makes me feel very soft-hearted towards him. So I'm very grateful for Taron Egerton being put in this role. I don't think anybody else could have done it. And if anybody else could have, they wouldn't have done it with the grace that he has unlike other actors that are going to remain nameless. I don't need to name names, do I? Didn't think so. So as I said, I don't want anybody to misunderstand anything that I'm saying. I want to use Rocketman as a jumping off point to talk about Hollywood's issue with telling queer stories 
and the way that they straight gaze those queer stories. I think that Taron Egerton, Richard Madden and Jamie Bell were brilliant in this movie. I think that everybody involved with this movie did a really good job and I don't want anybody to think that I am blaming them for anything that I'm going to talk about because I'm not. This issue is a lot bigger and I just think that this movie, being that it is out new and that it is coming out in the wake of the issues with another biopic movie about an LGBT musical icon and I think that this is a good time to have the conversation and so Rocketman is just a good a starting point for that discussion. I am not putting any blame on the people involved in Rocketman for what I'm going to talk about. First of all, the things I loved about Rocketman. One, Taron Egerton singing. Two, Richard Madden is so brilliant in this movie that he made me forget that I loved Rob Stark. He made me hate his face so much that I went home and I rewatched the Red Wedding scene from season 3 of Game of Thrones just to watch him get stabbed because John Reed deserved it. Three, I cried my eyes out during the rehab scene at the end of the movie. Oh, Taryn's performance in that scene and everybody else in that scene actually, it just, it blew my mind. It was so good. I was, I was literally sitting there with a tissue held up to my face trying not to sob loudly in my cinema with like a dozen old people watching the movie with me. For the beginning of the credits with those bits about Elton John's life and career, just I was already crying and then suddenly I was just an inconsolable mess. So they achieved something there. And finally, some of the lines in this movie were solid gold. I mean, my personal favourite, it has a really dismal and depressing context, but I absolutely love the line, rock and roll is not being blown by your secretary in front of the pool boys. Rocketman is at its heart a love story, but it isn't a romantic love story. The love story that you see on the screen is Elton and his music, and more importantly, it's Elton and himself. It's a story about a little boy who loved music and just wanted to be loved. Growing up into a man who still loved music and still just wanted to be loved, but was unfortunately looking for that love in a lot of very wrong places. It's just, it's really heartbreaking to watch. It's especially heartbreaking to watch Elton John meet John Reed and become absolutely besotted with him when you know that John Reed doesn't give a shit about him. He really doesn't. All he sees are the Dolan's dollar signs just flashing above Elton's head. The part of the movie that got to me the most was Elton John's rehab scenes and what is essentially the moments that he realizes that he's enough. Him on his own as a person is enough and if somebody doesn't love him for who that person is then they're not worth his time and that he doesn't need somebody to love him to be enough he just needs to accept himself for who he is uh, this is a bit of a spoiler but the scene where his lyricist and best friend bernie gives him a packet of new lyrics and elton sits down and he actually manages to make new music to go with them made me so emotional I actually had to fish new tissues out of my purse. It just, it was gorgeous. You know, you don't see the process of him learning to love himself, but you see the beginning of it. And I think that's a really important thing to show, especially in the recovery of a character who is addicted to illicit substances and alcohol and has been in a toxic, abusive relationship and is also very self-destructive towards themselves. And, you know, it was an absolutely gorgeous way to tell Elton John's story and I very much appreciate that. Because love is the overarching theme of the movie, you can't vie away from Elton's sexuality and because his abusive relationship with John Reed was such a defining factor in his self-destructive tendencies, you also really can't move away from that relationship. You need to have a lot of focus on it. But, oh, oh yeah, there's a but and it's a pretty big but. Despite the fact that the movie included it, it's not done in a way that queer people can really connect with. And that is my point about queer representation. Like I said, I don't blame the actors, I don't even blame the writers or the director. I, I do kind of blame the execs because they're in charge of a lot of this. This is part of a huge issue that pervades Hollywood. It pervades the television industry, it pervades 
the book writing industry. It pervades all the creative industries and it's why people argue so much for trans people playing trans characters and gay people playing gay characters and queer people writing and making and creating queer stories. Rocketman is a great place for me to start talking about this because of the time that it's come out, especially in line with Bohemian Rhapsody, and yeah, I'm just gonna name it because I already mentioned it before. I'm just gonna name it, Bohemian Rhapsody. It was shit. So when Rocketman has come out, God, like what, six months after Bohemian Rhapsody? Five months, something like that? It's a good time to really start talking about it because Rocketman does it slightly better, but it's still not good enough. This is the issue. Queer representation in Hollywood, on television, and in books is terrible. And the reason for this is straight audiences, straight creators, and straight execs. The LGBTQ plus community wants more and better LGBTQ plus representation, but the issue is that straight people don't understand what that means, they don't know how to deliver it, and in the cases that they do, they just don't want to, because they want to market these stories to straight audiences, not queer audiences. I'm gonna jump into a weird segue. Bear with me because it does have a purpose. Straight people are obsessed with queer sex. I'm just gonna reiterate that. They're obsessed with queer sex. I have not met very many straight people who are not weirdly fixated on queer sex, whether it's between gay men or lesbians, whether it involves trans people, it doesn't matter. They're weirdly fixated on it, whether it's the fetishization of it whether it's asking stupidly inappropriate questions that they would never ask their fellow straight people, or whether they're using it as the basis of their homophobia. Most homophobic slurs are sex related. It's just a weird focus of straight people. It's weird. Please stop. Please stop. I used to run a queer discussion group and we wanted to have an open forum night where we'd allow people to drop anonymous questions in a box and we'd have a panel of queer identifying people, um, gender diverse and sexually diverse people answering these questions. We knew, we knew as soon as we opened an anonymous question box, we were gonna get inappropriate sex related questions. What we didn't anticipate was the volume of inappropriate sex related questions. We're talking about 80 versus 20% of inappropriate versus genuine questions. And some of these questions were disgusting some of these questions were incredibly invasive and really none of anybody's business, especially when it comes to trans people. That was just horrendously gross. And some of them were just baffling. Here's a radical idea. Not everything is about sex. When we ask for more and better queer representation, we're not solely talking about sex, but for some reason, straight people only hear, we want near pornographic gay sex scenes. What? Don't get me wrong, equal representation does mean that if this movie was straight and the writers would put in a sex scene without question, but it's actually about a queer couple and neither of them is asexual or sex repulsed, then you damn well better put in a sex scene because queer people are not sexless dolls. Good and equal queer representation means no heteronormativity, no cis normativity, no trans misogyny, no straight gays. Tell as many queer stories as there are queer people and experiences and stop telling the same queer stories about the same queer characters over and over and over again. Stop hiding characters' sexual orientations and then just throwing them in for a diversity bonus in your story. Stop creating two-dimensional cardboard cutouts of queer stereotypes to fulfill your diversity quota. Stop treating queer people and their relationships like straight people and straight relationships because they are actually different. Stop making queerness implied and swept under a rug. And yes, include sex scenes that aren't glazed over for straight people's comfort. But most of all, and most importantly, stop telling queer stories for straight audiences and tell them for queer audiences. Because this is the heart of the problem. The straight gays in Hollywood, on TV, and in books that almost every queer story is told through. Now, if you don't know what straight gaze is, think of male gaze. Most people know what that is. And that is the process of creating female characters and telling their stories and showing them and their experiences in a way that is appealing to 
purely heterosexual men, essentially. So straight gaze is the process of telling queer characters' stories and experiences and showcasing their life and, yes, sex in a way that is palatable to straight people. The problem with both of those issues is that it alienates the people who should actually be the intended audience of those stories. It detracts from what should be a good story and makes it something that we can't connect with. So while it's true that Rocketman didn't shy away from the fact that Elton John is gay, I don't think that we should have to be grateful for the fact that a movie about a gay man actually showed his gayness. That's like being grateful that The Martian had spaceships. It's a movie about space travel and exploration. It should have spaceships. So a movie about a gay man should have his gay experiences. I think the thing that was the most alienating is the fact that the moment Elton realizes that he's gay is so glossed over because straight people don't care about that. Straight people don't care about the emotional and psychological journeys and often difficulties that queer people face coming to terms with the fact that they're queer. In actual fact, the moment he realizes he's gay is played for comic relief. There's a soul singer who announces that he's gay. There's the moment Elton realizes that he's right and then there's the moment his girlfriend at the time finds out about it. They're all played for laughs. Like it's some great big joke, realizing you're gay is so funny, ha 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 ha. Stop it. In fact, the only emotional and moving part of that entire part of the movie is the moment when Elton tries to kiss his best friend and lyricist Bernie Taupin and Bernie very gently and kindly turns him down and it's such a loving and moving moment and basically was the moment that cemented their bond for life. Speaking of Bernie, here's another moment about a gay character that was played for comedic effect. When they're in LA, there's a gay bar owner who hits on Bernie. First of all, predatory gay behavior is gross. At sexual harassment, it is not okay. Two, please stop making characters' gayness a joke. It's insulting, it's offensive, and very homophobic. Okay, the big issue. I know I said that queer representation isn't all about sex, but sex is such a big part of this issue that I need to talk about this. And by this, I mean the sex scene. I heard a lot about this sex scene before I went to see the movie. I heard that it was super explicit, that they had to fight to keep it in the movie. They had to fight to allow this moment that actually represents Elton's queer journey. And and look, I don't, I don't want to demean it, because it does. It's an important moment in the movie, and Taryn and Richard do a really good job. It's beautiful, it's moving, it's lovely. It's also really tame. Okay, just so you know, I had to take a break from filming this video for a few reasons, so the lighting's a little bit different, and um, I'm sorry if anything is, like, too different. Okay, moving back on. I heard that this sex scene was so explicit that the studio execs were really nervous about including it in the movie for various homophobic and microaggressive reasons, and in reality, it is really, really tame. If you want to see an actually explicit gay sex scene, go and watch the US version of Queer as Folk. Even the sex scene between Mark Ruffalo and Matt Bowman's characters in The Normal Heart is more explicit than the sex scene. But then again, Normal Heart, directed by a gay man, based on a play written by a gay man, Matt Bowman is a gay man. Own voices. Without demeaning the sex scene and its importance in the movie, and because I am very grateful that they fought to keep it in, my point is, they should never have had to fight to keep it in. It is a tame scene that is less explicit than the majority of heterosexual sex scenes that you find in movies of the same rating. Point is, the fact that they had to fight to keep such a tame sex scene in this movie about a gay man is incredibly problematic and strongly indicative of Hollywood's desire to neuter queer characters and especially gay male queer characters. And they do this in order to be able to market a story about a queer character to a straight audience in a way that they can feel comfortable watching this movie and they can walk away from it thinking, oh gee, I'm really supportive of the queer community because I watched a queer movie that was geared towards me as a straight person. The fact that Hollywood is so intent on altering queer characters so that straight people aren't uncomfortable with the content is so insulting and just 
<laughs> Hollywood wants gay men to be sexless dolls so that they are completely harmless and palatable to straight people, but they want lesbians to be super hot and super sexy so that straight men get boners while they're watching them. What? And this is the thing. There is no in-between. Either queer characters are made to be completely sexless and non-threatening and totally like adorable and palatable to straight people, or they're completely fetishized and turned into these ridiculously hypersexualized creatures to titillate straight people who want to fetishize the sex between them. There's no in-between. There are very few things where queer sex is treated normally, where queer characters and their sex lives and their attraction is treated as normal. And this is done to make straight people happy and comfortable. What? What do you think queer people have been watching and reading our entire lives? I have seen every possible iteration of two straight white people falling in love that you can imagine. I literally have to scour lists for movies and TV shows and books that have the kind of content that I want to read and watch. I have to look for it and then when I find it, most of it is written for straight people and I can tell because I'm not connecting to a character that is supposed to be telling a story from my community. It's supposed to be a character in a story that I connect with easier than a heterosexual character in a story, but I don't because they're written for straight people. This is why own voices artists are really important. The only way that you can erase straight gays and male gays, heteronormativity, cisnormativity, trans misogyny, and everything else along those lines, biphobia, acephobia, racism and, and racial profiling and the hypersexualization of certain ethnicities, the only way you can erase it is by allowing people from those groups to tell those stories. Or alternatively, straight creators need to listen to the voices of the groups whose stories they're telling. Actually listen, because when they don't listen, we end up with movies like Bohemian Rhapsody and to a lesser extent Rocketman. Those movies do not represent queer voices. They are queer stories framed in a way to make straight people comfortable with consuming them. Not queer people who should be the target audience, because the people that those stories are about are from our community, they are a part of our culture and our history. So those stories should be ones that we can take ownership of. My conclusion is that if we, the LGBTQ plus community, have had to live our entire lives consuming media made specifically for straight audiences, straight people can just suck it up buttercup and watch some stories that are created for queer audiences because there aren't a lot of them and we deserve more. We deserve to be able to watch and read stories about people from our community that we can connect with. Stories that speak to us and don't shy away from our voice and our experience and the things that we have been trying to tell people for decades because that is equality and representation. That's true equality and representation. And that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. This is Andy Barr, a very exhausted gay woman, signing off. Bye.